Chandrayaan just landed on the moon, but your portfolio is still dharti pe. Today, we'll go on an exploration mission to understand if the sector looks promising enough to invest, how ISRO is working at such a crazy budget and how private players are killing it. And also, we'll talk about two stocks in this new sector. But before we begin, hit that like and subscribe button. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about So the first thing we're going to do is talk about Antrix. It's derived from the word Antriksh and it's changing the entire world. There are two kinds of players in the market. One, there is ISRO's Antrix and second, there are private players. Now, let's look at Antrix a little more closely. Antrix is one completely owned by the government and it has all these services over here. So you can imagine it can pretty much do anything that you can think about that a space company wants to do. Now think about the economics of this. I think India is very efficient in whatever it does, also bringing in high tech and class. Look at the budgets over here for NASA and Adi Purush. And finally, look at India's budget. We are killing it in terms of per pound cost to actually send something into space and setting world benchmarks. Antrix has actually launched more than 350 satellites and worked with over 35 countries. They also have a lot of clients in satellite and telemetry. All these guys. Now it's time to look at the PNL for Antrix. So over here we can see the PNL as of 2022 versus 2021 March ended and we can see revenues actually reduced after all the expenses and tax the profit was 25 crores. Hmm, that's about 13%. It's not bad, but it is what it is. But we don't need to talk about this company because it's government owned and there is no way for you to actually invest in it. What you can invest are private players. So let's talk about the private players. The Indian government on this date said that they will open space to private players, which means Pesa yahan bhi ban sakta hai. And this is possibly why we made this video. So you know what these two companies actually are. If you look at the startups and there may have been a funding winter in 2022, 23, but if you look at these startups, they have raised some money as well. In fact, Pixel raised about $36 million this year as well. So it seems like funding isn't really drying up for the space startups. I'm sure because there's not enough to choose from. How many people get up in the morning and say, I'm space tech startup? Karunga? I'm sure not a lot. But I have bad news too. You can't invest in these companies either because they are still private. So we'll have to go to the next step where we'll talk about publicly listed companies which are working in the field of space. The reason why we talked about all of this is to explain that the sector is actually booming and India has some kind of edge on the global stage. We didn't want to jump straight to two companies and talk about their history, etc. So I hope that made sense. If you've liked the video so far, hit that like and subscribe and let's move on to our first company and the company is called MTR Technologies. All right, so let's do our basic uh, analysis over here. Its market cap is 6,500 crores, stock P is 62, which sounds a little expensive, but let's see the rest. The ROC is 22% and ROE is 18%. It's not bad. Another thing that stands out to me is that it was established in 1970. Promoter owns almost 50%, about 46%. And the debt to equity seems low. So the first thing we notice is that the order book isn't 100% space. It's actually a tech company. I don't mean the tech company, but only about 17% of revenue comes from space technology. The rest of it comes from nuclear, clean energy and other kinds of tech, which is actually very nice. You don't want all the money to come from one kind of sector. This means it can actually grow into the space sector if the sector itself grows. Makes sense, right? A cool thing is that they supplied the PSLV C25 for the MOM, no, not that one, the Mars Orbiter mission. They also have big CapEx plans. They've done about 105 crores in debt and they'll take this to actually make fabrication plants, etc. Which means that they are anticipating a large order flow to come. Otherwise, companies don't do CapEx. And finally, the company plans to expand into electronic manufacturing. What's cool is that this means that they're going deeper into stuff which other people aren't building. And you know what they say, money is in the niches. But all of this doesn't come with its share of weaknesses. When companies work with other companies, sometimes the other companies don't pay up. 
and that's called receivables. So here we can see that they're increasing receivables in the business. There is also unused cash reserved of 590 crores and despite that, they took 100 crores in debt. The optimist in me says that they feel that a large order is going to come so they'll need free cash and that's why they took the debt. But who knows, generally that's not a good thing to see. I wonder why they have so much cash free, yet they took a loan. And finally, there is some concentration risk over here. They make 100 crore rupees from just two companies. So if one of them go, then a large portion of the revenue can actually decrease. Hmm, that's a weakness. So we're not saying to go ahead and buy this company. In fact, we don't think you should buy any company we talk about on this channel ever. What's interesting is that the cerebral part of it, where you talk about how India fits in the world, within space, what are edges, and what private players are doing. And I always think that's interesting. If you do want to learn how to invest properly, either invest in just index funds and forget about it, or click on the link below and go and join Prime, where we'll teach you in front of a mentor, live over a weekend, for no cost, how trading and investing works. I promise you it will be a ride of a lifetime and you learn a skill that you should have learned in school, but heck, we're solving it, so might as well attend. Also, one little thing, it's free, but not everyone gets in. So please try to fill that form properly and hopefully you get in. Anyway, let's move on to our next company over here. It's called Avantel. Avantel makes satellites. I just wanna think about this a little bit. The CEO gets up in the morning, he's like, fuck, I own a satellite company. That's gotta be cool. Anyway, let's look at the screener. Here I can see that the market cap is 1400 crores, stock P is 41. What's important is the financial efficiency ratios. Ratios. The ROC and ROE are 37% and 30% each. This is not easy to do. This guy understands how to use existing assets and make a profit from it. The promoter holding is also 40%, which means there is some skin in the game of the operators and owners. Always a good thing. Also, their debt to equity ratio seems to be on the lower side. Very nice. Let's face it. Anyone with a blueprint can actually build stuff if they have the right people, right? So the real moat in this industry is IP or intellectual property. And this company has three different kinds of IPs, which is very interesting. It's sort of like a diversified IP bouquet, if you might say it. So they own IP in the material science, they own IP in the software side, and they also own IP in the design side. So if there's some fabrication part that has to be done, they own the design side that as well. And remember, any space company is not playing at a local level, they're playing at a global level. So having IP, you can actually enforce it outside of India. So it's a good thing. These guys also spend more money on R&D than the rest. The industry spends 6%, they spend 9% which is a good thing. They also have healthy financials, consistent growth, and a massive order book. But all of these good things, how can it not come with some bad stuff? So let's see some weaknesses. One, it's a highly regulated industry. Space tech is very close to weapons as well. So it's monitored, it is scrutinized, and it has rules that can come up at any time. If you thought SEBI is hard, Think about the government thinking about your company, this company, and what it has to do with technology and the country itself. They can basically shut down a product if they think it affects India's national security. Now this completely makes sense, but it's a risk for the company. A lot of the money comes from the government. So if the government doesn't pay up and the receivables keep increasing, the money doesn't flow in. That's a second risk. Finally, the promoter holding, although is good, it's been decreasing a little bit over the last few quarters. Generally, not a good thing. And finally, its asset base seems to be really small. Now, for a company like this, the asset base should actually be pretty high. So I don't understand why the asset base is actually so low. Where is the money going? Is everything just going into research? But then they also have to build stuff, right? So why isn't their capex enough? Not sure, maybe that's why the ROE and ROC are so high. But something to definitely for you to look into if you're interested in discovering more about this company. So how much portfolio space would you allocate to space? I think it should be less than that. Most of your money right now in the way that India is actually growing should be on bets that actually work almost beyond doubt. And I think that is mostly towards large cap, maybe a little bit of mid cap. 
if you're doing sector allocation i think it's too early for you to think of that i think if your entire financial organization uh, for your family is set and you still have some money over then you can do space tech a little bit more money but imagine this right it should not be more than 7 or 8% of your entire portfolio that's the space it should take but if you think we did some great research because we did and i didn't the team did it i'm basically taking credit here by making this video the team also did fantastic post production pre production there's a army of people behind me right now looking and trying to make this work because we think the internet is this great equalizing force to actually bring great quality content to people in india so if you think we're doing a good job hit a subscribe and say something nice in the comments and dedicate it to the learn app team because we really really eat shit breathe just youtube and that's why this team is able to create some of the best videos in the country and the best way to actually say that is in the comments because we read every single one of them if you thought this was good let us know and see you in the next video बट वी डोंट ये देखो ऐसा लग रहा है ना कि ये ऐसे ऐसे कर रहा है गुड क्यूटी स्पेस क्यूटी